RNA is ribonucleic acid. Ribo, just as in DNA, refers to the ribose sugar with its five carbons, which are numbered in the same way as we number them in DNA. And we have hydroxyl groups as ribose would have on the second and third carbon and we would also have a nucleic acid a nitrogenous base on the first carbon for instance adenine and finally one would have a phosphate group attached to the fifth carbon of the ribose sugar and this phosphate is negatively charged and here we have a nucleotide the basic repeating unit of RNA and the nucleotide is a nucleoside monophosphate where the nucleoside refers to the ribose sugar with a nitrogenous base attached to it. Now, DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid, and that refers to the fact that there is no hydroxyl group on the second carbon, but RNA does have that second hydroxyl group. And therefore, um, is referred to as ribonucleic acid. Even though RNA and DNA are both nucleic acids, they have certain key differences. The first one we have discussed already, which is that um, RNA has the ribose sugar, the backbone is uh, uses the ribose sugar, whereas DNA uses the deoxyribose sugar that does not have the hydroxyl group on the second carbon. Another key difference is that DNA has thymine as one of the pyrimidine nitrogenous bases, whereas RNA does not have thymine but instead has uracil. And the main way that uh, uracil differs from thymine is that there is no methyl group on the fifth um, uh, position, fifth carbon in uh, uracil. And uracil itself creates another difference because uracil base pairs with adenine just like thymine base pairs with adenine in DNA. However, uracil can also form two hydrogen bonds with guanine and this explains um, certain properties of uh, the genetic code that we will discuss later on. Another difference between RNA and uh, DNA is that RNA is obligately single-stranded whereas DNA is although it can be single stranded is mostly found in a double stranded form and what the, uh, you know having a single stranded nucleic acid means that you can have base pairing within different nucleotides of the same molecule of the same strands and therefore rna is capable of forming um, um, secondary structures such as this um, stem loop that's drawn over here and finally um, the fact that RNA can fold and form all these secondary structures means that um, RNA is sort of uh, similar to a protein in that it can work as an enzyme since enzymes require these these complicated structures and shapes um, in order to catalyze reactions, um, RNA, because of its ability to form secondary structures, can work like an enzyme 
and these um, uh, enzymes that um, um, are based on RNA are called ribozymes. And here is a, a an example of a ribozyme called the Varkud satellite ribozyme that can cleave phosphodiester bonds. Unlike DNA, whose main function is to carry um, uh, hereditary information about heredity or genetic information, um, RNA actually plays many different roles um, in organisms. Um, and of course, the, the first and most important type of RNA is messenger RNA, which carries um, um, uh, information to make proteins. Now, along with messenger RNA, there are a large number of RNAs that are called functional RNAs, which don't play the role of messenger RNA in carrying information, carrying genetic information to make proteins. However, they um, play several important roles. So the first is tRNA or transfer RNA that um, uh, bring amino acids during translation to the ribosome and, and also recognize the codons to bring the correct amino acid uh, um, at, at the correct space in the polypeptide. Then you have ribosomal RNAs, rRNAs, which are uh, basically ribozymes that are part of the ribosome um, and, and uh, involved in the functioning of uh, the ribosome. Then you have small nuclear RNAs or SN RNAs that are involved in splicing. You can have micro RNAs which regulate gene expression or um, um, uh, regulate translation. Then you have small interfering RNAs or siRNAs and PV interacting RNAs. That play the role of uh, sort of uh, uh, host defense and inhibit viruses and transposable elements. And then you can also have link RNAs or long non-coding RNAs. And the function of these uh, uh, link RNAs is the subject of active research. Um, originally, um, some link RNAs um, for example, exist were known to uh, be involved in dosage compensation, which is balancing the gene expression from the sex chromosomes in males and females. However, since the advent of uh, uh, widespread genome sequencing, a very large number of link RNAs have been discovered, and uh, we don't really know what these link RNAs do and is being um, uh, investigated. Next, let us talk about messenger RNA or mRNA and the role it plays in information transfer uh, uh, of converting our genotype into phenotype 
or in other words, the role it plays in the central dogma. So let's say we have some DNA, our genome, and what's going to happen is that parts of the genome are going to be read into RNA through a process called transcription. And that mRNA is going to be read to make proteins in a process called translation. And it's interesting to, to wonder or, or to think about why Why do we need mRNA and why we can't just go straight from DNA to protein? Because mRNA contains basically the same information that the DNA contains. And there is, of course, uh, you know, no um, right or wrong answer to this, but one may speculate that one potential reason to have mRNA is amplification. There are many proteins in our cell, like actin, which uh, is part of the cytoskeleton, um, where we may need tens of thousands, of hundreds of thousands of uh, protein molecules. And um, each cell has only two copies of the gene in a, in a diploid organism, and therefore it may not, uh, you know, one, it may be very difficult to read the DNA fast enough in order to create so many copies. And what mRNA does is it allows you amplify or multiply the number of templates from which protein is made. For example, from two DNA molecules, you could make, let's say, 100 RNA molecules. But then if each RNA molecule can be translated into 100 protein molecules, it's easier to get 10,000, let's say, protein molecules. Um, another reason for um, the indirect transfer of genetic information from DNA to protein is that perhaps um, uh, RNA was, uh, the or originally, RNA was the information storage molecule and not DNA, and that's the RNA world hypothesis for the origin of life, um, which states that life started out as a bunch of self-replicating RNA molecules. And the fact that RNA um, um, can, uh, can make ribozymes or enzymes is a, a strong hint that this was perhaps the case since RNA can catalyze its own um, um, creation or, or uh, synthesis, whereas DNA cannot catalyze its um, the transcription into RNA um, or even DNA replication, and you need proteins, uh, RNA polymerase and DNA polymerase to carry out the job. So perhaps the reason we have an intermediate um, messenger RNA is that originally um, mRNA performed both functions uh, information storage and also the the um, the providing activity or, or doing all the things that proteins do and um, later on um, more specialized molecules DNA for information storage and proteins for um, activity were evolved but leaving mRNA still uh, or RNA still as an intermediate between DNA and protein.